Chapter 7. There's no such thing as a born salesperson. When I was pregnant, it was an exciting time. For the first couple months of pregnancy, I was convinced my husband and I were going to have a baby girl. My whole family is women. I grew up with two sisters and four cousins, three of whom are women, two aunts and multiple extended family. Again, all women. My husband, on the other hand, was the complete opposite, with more males on his side of the family, and he was convinced having anything besides a boy was not even a possibility. So for weeks, I read online all the old wives' tales, what cravings I was having, whether my skin was looking better or worse since becoming pregnant, and where the moon had been positioned at our time of conception. All of this was to try to prove to my husband that we were, in fact, having a girl and not a boy. The 20th week of pregnancy is the anatomy scan by the ultrasound technician. Besides checking for healthy limbs and cranial growth, they also tell you the sex of the baby. Finally, one of us would be right in our knowing of what our little baby would be. As the ultrasound technician smoothed the gel over my belly and scanned along, my husband and I held hands. Would she tell us we're having a little baby boy or a little baby girl? Will it be a little baby Kim wearing cute pink dresses or a baby Sean wearing chic vests and bow tie combos? As the ultrasound technician scanned my belly, at no time do we hear her expect a pause, take a deep breath, and say, Kim, Sean, you're not having a little baby boy or a little baby girl. You're going to have a salesperson. Being a salesperson is not something into which you're born. It's not something you either possess or don't have. It's a skill. It's like learning to read, ride a bike, or learning to cook. It's a series of steps, a process you follow. And like any skill, it can be really hard and difficult at the beginning. And as you continue to practice it and get better at it, you can start to do it naturally. Although my husband and I both had successful sales careers and now own our own businesses, our boy Marcus may end up being a better negotiator when it comes to his grades with his teachers, but that is because he learned and practiced that skill. Sales skills take time. When I cooked my first turkey for Christmas dinner, I went online and found a recipe. I bought all the ingredients and on Christmas day, I finally read the recipe. Step one. To create the brine, combine the aromatic herbs, citrus, and stock in a pot. Yes, I can do this. Step two, bring to a boil. So far, so good. Step three, allow the brine to cool, then cover the turkey with brine and refrigerate for 24 to 48 hours. Oh, crap. I hadn't read the recipe the first time, but what I did, what I could. I stuffed the turkey and I used the brine as the base and it roasted. I underestimated how long it would take for the turkey to cook, and the turkey was done two hours after the rest of the meal was prepared. Was it the best turkey? Probably not. My family was likely too generous with the compliments, but the following year, I was better prepared. I made the brine a couple days ahead, and I marinated the turkey for the recommended time. The third year, the turkey was finished roasting 30 minutes before the rest of the meal. The fourth year, I adjusted the recipe slightly to better match my taste preferences. Each time I followed the recipe, I got a little bit better. The end result continuously became better, and my skills in cooking a turkey improved year after year. What would have happened in that first year if I decided to quit the moment I realized I didn't marinate the turkey for the 24 hours the recipe asked for? Should I have thrown my hands in the air? I could have gone to my husband and said, I tried to cook a turkey and it didn't work. I give up. Of course not. That would be a waste of a turkey. It would not have been a disappointment to my family and friends who were counting on me. They were still impressed that I tried, even if it it wasn't perfect. But people do this when they're trying to make a sale. They will freeze in the steps of the sales process. That could be the initial call for a meeting, a LinkedIn request, or sending an email to connect. They send one and never get the result they are after, so they decide to completely give up. This process doesn't work, Kim. Or worse, they never make that first phone call because they are so concerned about trying to say the perfect first thing over the phone call that they never attempt the call. I knew a woman who would agonize about making the phone call. She was in KO Sales U, and after we taught her the lesson on making phone calls, she froze. We showed the students the formula for creating a great phone call. 
We do not provide a call script. Instead, we give the outline of a call and ask the student to add their own message and authenticity into the mold. We require students to practice their phone call conversations with their fellow students. One of the requirements to pass in the program is completing a certain number of role plays with their classmates. This woman refused to do it. When I asked her where she was in drafting her first phone call conversation and how soon she would be ready for practice, she always needed more time. But after a month, she still hadn't started. When I followed up with her again and she said she was still trying to figure out the perfect thing to say, I knew she wasn't going, if she wasn't forced to do this, it would never happen. So I told her to stop thinking about the perfect thing to say and just start talking. Then I made her pretend to call me. Despite us having a 10 minute conversation up until this point, the moment I asked her to pretend to call me, her anxiety spiked. What was once an articulate woman became a blubbering mess. She stumbled over her words. She would say one thing and then stop herself and then ask for a second to rephrase it. She sounded as if she was trying to cry on the phone, but she got through the fake phone call. It was far from good, but she made her first attempt. Then I told her to do it again. The second time she was better, there was far less stuttering and she didn't sound as if she was going to cry. I made her do it a third, a fourth, and a fifth time. By the last time she practiced it, it was the night and day improvement. She didn't stop herself once. She went with the flow. She was even able to move through it, the objection of send me some information. Each time she practiced, she became better and better. But she was expecting to make the most perfect phone call the first time. She was setting her expectations up for failure. I have never met a single person who was able to try something for the first time and complete it to perfection. Performance athletes have fallen, gotten hurt, bled before they ever became good enough to compete. Concert pianists likely started by jamming their fingers on a keyboard and eventually learning how to play chopsticks. Even the best chefs in the world burnt their food when they were first learning. Everyone started somewhere. So have fun with it. You will fail. You will never complete the first time or the second or third the way you think it should have been done in your head, but you will get through it you will survive and you will learn from each experience and be able to do it a little bit better every single time.